That's why they have all these housewives who are saying, oh, you're this, this floor 14, you cannot yeah, buy yeah, because correct. it sounds like dying. Yeah. You know? Hey guys, I'm Sarah and I'm right here in Malacca. In Malacca, there's so much to eat, so much to enjoy and really a sight to behold. But if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm at a 138 acre area called Impression City. And Impression City is a new cultural tourism integrated township development that spans over 138 kilometers. And it's only 3.5 kilometers away from the World UNESCO site. I'm also extremely excited because I get to meet Dr. Joey Yap and I've got a ton of questions about feng shui, investments, and a ton of business tips that I need to grab from him. So come on, let's go. Hey Sarah. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good. Welcome to Impression City, Malacca. Thanks for inviting. You're welcome. So a little birdie told me that you have a little more than 2 million followers worldwide. Is that correct? That's pretty correct. Yes, well, thank you. I've got over 2 million questions to ask you because okay. you seem like the man to know. Do you mind if I ask you at my dream home? Let's dog? do it. Okay, let's go. An elegantly designed property on five acres of land, nestled in the 138-acre Impression City in Malacca, the meeting point of cultures. Discover the eclectic charm of the dawn, styled with elegant textured details and classic characteristics of a theater's backstage, anticipated to premiere with the iconic Impression Malacca. Encounter the exceptional at the dawn. Alright, Dato, you've taken a look at my dream home. Right, I did. <laughs> and I have so many questions about Feng Shui. Okay, what that's makes why a, I'm here. What makes a place lucky? Well, I think there are four factors that actually um, give the place good Feng Shui. Mm -hmm. Many people don't know about this because they think it's the colors and the mirrors and stuff. Mm. So these four things are, number one, the mm. environment. The environment, that's every place that we go to have their own unique vibrational energies. Right. So Feng Shui is nothing more than a study of this vibrational energy. If you go to a place, you feel great. Just mm. like you're here, you feel great, right? Yes. So this is what we call the environment's vibrational energy. That's the core of Feng Shui. The other three factors are the building. Mm. Like this room, this this studio itself, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's the buildings, the shape that contains the energy. Yeah. So the second factor. The third factor is the people. Different people who use the, the, the place will get you know, a different vibrational right. connection with the place and the building. So you might be good for you, might not be good for somebody else. Yeah. The fourth factor is time. Mm. Different periods of time, they have their peaks and their low seasons. Right. Right? But the, the time factor is about 20 years. Mm. Right? So we call it the 20 year cycle. So when we are talking about feng shui, yeah. we are talking about the combination of these four factors. Right. So when you have a couple of these factors that United, yeah, right. Then we have good feng shui. Are they? Are all of these factors equal? Like no, are they're not. They're not. They are seventy percent of it is environment. So if you just choose, mm -hmm. if you cho chose an environment that has the vibrational energy, you have better chances right. of of tapping into it. You think of it as feng shui energy is like a Wi-Fi, yeah. right? If that place has got very good signal, yes. right, you always get a full bar. Yeah. Suppose it's got no signal whatsoever. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter what which direction you're trying to tap to you just going to get very low signal. Mm. Okay, so the first choice is always to choose an environment that has the energies. Okay, so when we're talking about environment, how how much in detail are we talking about the environment? Is it, you know, being okay. being so, by the water, are you being the jungles, well, like in the tilt You're asking a good question. Okay, <laughs> so in general, it's everything's about yin and yang. Okay. So what happens is this, yin and yang in the natural environment is about the hills and water. Mm. So these are two factors. So anything that is higher is considered a hill, a, a yin factor. Mm -hmm. Anything that's lower is considered the yang factor, which is water. So in a detailed level, like what you're asking, you're yeah. asking like a real student of feng shui here. <laughs> we have five factors, long sa, so you'd have five factors, long dragon, yeah. as in dragon veins. These are actually the ley lines where energy flows through the land, mm. okay? Uh, number two is embrace of hills. Because every, the fact that we have water, water curvature mm -hmm. around a city, that is because their lands have high and low. So right. that's the traditional term for green dragon, white tiger. I see. Most we call it Qinglong Bafu, green dragon, white tiger. Yeah. But what it really means is the contour of the land. Okay? 
So the, the third factor is water. Mm -hmm. So water is one of the most important factors because to see the fastest effect of feng shui, yeah. always water. So most people like to use water type of water-based feng shui. Yes. Right? So face water, see the water because it's faster. Right. But for lasting, it's always the mountains. Yin is lasting. Right. Water is fast. Mm. Okay? So that's the third factor. The fourth factor is what we call a meridian spot. A meridian spot is called Yudwai. Yudwai is where the concentration of energy is. So it's like one big piece of land, but there will be a few spots where the energy concentrates. It's like how it is in the body. <laughs> yeah. Right? Meridian spots. Yes, that's right. Okay, so pressure points. Yes. Right? So in feng shui, it's similar for the land. So this is the fourth factor in land forms. And the fifth factor is orientation. So if you're facing to or, or what we call connected to yeah. these factors, you get access to the energy. Mm. So these are the detailed level of what we call the environment. But for most beginners, if you're watching this, <laughs> what happens is you just want to know where the water is. It's the easiest to see. Yeah, I was just going to say, I have two questions about that. So right. one, my mom is always saying, look for a water feature. Yeah. All the time she's saying that. Yeah, yeah. So if you're beside water, if you're close to water, like if there's you know a little fountain on the side, like what determines what well, is a course. good water feature uh, for you? That's great. A uh, uh, natural water, it's always better than a man-made water. Mm. Okay. Now, if you have water flow, at least you have the excess of yang energies. Now, why, why do we need yang energies? It's because generally, if you want to do anything in life, we need to be optimistic. We got to have the energy. If you want to come up with an idea, yeah. we need energy. We want to come make money, right? We need energy. We want to help someone in it, we need energy. To love someone or hate someone, yeah. we, we still require energy. Yes. So if you have access to water, at least it's there, it is easy for the manipulation, which is the orientation of feng shui to happen. Mm. So if you don't have this, it's harder to create this through an artificial fountain of sorts. Yes. So it's like that, you know. I always say, if you, if you don't have hair, yeah, you cannot perm hair. Yeah. Right. So you gotta go and first have the environment that has yes. the energy. Yes. Then you can tap to it using feng shui. Yeah. Well, okay. So the second question I had was the meridian points, mm -hmm. and I find that really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Who determines what is a meridian point, or where mm -hmm. is the meridian point? Is okay. it the center, or the heart of something? You know, right. yeah. Uh, there are certain uh, principles to follow, uh, guiding principles. It's like you look at the GPS. Who determines where this is? Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to set it first. Right. Right. So in feng shui, there are certain features that if you see present, like you take off like you check everything yeah. then in that vicinity there should be a pressure point there should right. be an energy point so that's when you hear people say green dragon white tiger right. orientation left and yeah. right that's where it came from yeah. because we want to check out all those boxes and say mm. oh you can have all this that means this area is good for that aspect and plus we are all receptors of energy yeah. so we, got, we can feel it if you go to a place and you feel positive, you feel optimistic, you feel great. Yeah. Then that place has good function. If you mm. go to a place and seriously And you, it just like drains, drains you, you right? you're angry. You're angry all the time, <laughs> you see your wife, you wanna warm in, yeah. then you have a problem, you know? Right. So that, that's how a place has bad function. Yeah. Okay, so you you will be the best judge. It's usually that's it. So when we say we use feng shui, mm -hmm. it's nothing more than just a calculation. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the result is always the people. I, and I think when you say people, I, I think about the energy of people mm -hmm. and I think about the energy that you're surrounded by. Yeah. And so often we think that it's like colors or mirrors or things right. that you need to just kind of boost it up. I need more yellow in my life right. for this. That, that, so that's, does that affect anything? That affects very little. Okay. okay. So the thing is, uh, human beings cannot overpower the environment. Mm -hmm. It's like that. If we are a positive person, yeah. but all our friends, yeah. right, every single one of them are negative, they're going to drain you down some, Absolutely. in some ways, right? Yeah, I totally so agree. If, if you have a positive vibe and you're also surrounded by people who have positive vibe, what yeah. will happen? You, you get a boost. Yeah. You get you, The energy comes and you unite them as a team, mm -hmm. right? So when we talk about colors, it just affects your thinking a little bit. It may affect your mood a little bit, mm. but it's not an overall thing. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about mother nature, mm -hmm. that's real energy. Right. So colors have very little impact. Ah, I see. And I mean, when we when we talk about living where we've got, you know, apartment buildings, there's always these flo uh, floors and mm. numbers that right. are like really bad that, you know, you're not supposed to have a floor, it's got to no. have this or that number. The, pro the problem with uh, a lot of feng shui is they have uh, incorporated a lot of common uh, housewife superstition into it. Right. Uh, that's the thing, right? Because uh, unfortunately in this field, um, before my time, of yes. course, <laughs> uh, uh, 30, 40, 40 years ago, yeah. um, 
this a lot of people who practice this they they are not educated mm -hmm. okay so they when they're not educated they talk some make sense some doesn't make sense yeah and so that they that's why they have all these housewives who are saying oh yeah, this this floor 14 you cannot yeah, buy yeah, because correct. it sounds like dying yeah and, so what it sounds like and symbolically is for the symbol minded or the simple minded. Right. It's, it's not nothing to do with feng shui. Okay. Feng shui is direction, mm -hmm. location, and time. Mm. You gotta know where and when mm -hmm. you're aligning to it and the energy and, and plus you gotta be able to feel it. Yeah. Right? If, if you don't feel it, you don't feel good, there's something wrong with the feng shui. Yeah. Okay, and if you feel good, you will do well. Yeah. You will want to work harder, mm -hmm. you will have be, you'll be more creative because creative is a source of life. Yes. Every problem when you are creative, you can solve. Mm. When you're not creative, your problem, you only know how to complain. Right? right? I feel like it, this is like a profound information that is coming <laughs> but this my is way. Feng shui. No, I, I think it's great. And I think you really explain how the energy is, it's a lot about yourself and yeah. the environment. All right. Um, I wanted to spell a couple myths that I have. Okay. Is there such thing as a, a lucky home or a lucky house or a lucky place? Essentially, what people call as lucky is when they get things their way, mm -hmm. right? In order to get things that go your way, first you must know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Or if you have no direction in life and no purpose in life, you cannot possibly be lucky. Okay? So it starts with having a home that allows you to feel good so that you have clarity about your life. Right. When you're clear on what financial goals you have, when you're clear on what relationship goals you have, when you're clear on what you want to do with your life mm -hmm. and you meet those goals, you will call yourself lucky. Right, right. So that's what feng shui is about. And is and you mentioned earlier a bit about timing as well. How does that factor into okay. luck? Because um, essentially life is consists of two things, time and energy. You think about it. We don't run out of time, we just run out of energy. Mm -hmm. At some point, this energy will leave you and then you're dead, mm -hmm. right? So every single day, we are using some of our energy mm -hmm. or we're depleting it. Mm -hmm. What if the environment can give back some of this to us? that we live in, we can make good use of the time that we are given. Right. If we don't exist, time still exists, you know. That's it's, true. Right? So we need the energy to turn this time that we are given to yeah. something that's good. Some people need 10 years to do one small thing. Mm. Some people with one year, they do 10 years worth of work. Right. The difference is energy. Mm. So when we are talking about feng shui, we are trying to get this energy to work in our favor. Mm. So when that happens, lay people's uh, term for it is lucky. Yeah. But what we know is we, we just have more energy. Right. And and I, I was going to say just one more part about the environment and, and the way you see things. Mm. Um, what about like the view? You know, mm. when, when people say that, you know, you open your curtains and you're like, oh, there's water everywhere or, you know, there's mountains and, yeah. and whatnot. Does that make a difference in terms of direction? That's, that's environment or, that we're talking about. Yeah. So, the, what, what, they, what essentially ordinary layman calls the view is what feng shui practitioners call source of energy. Mm. Your source of energy has to come from nature. Now, even if without the view, it's at night, for yeah. example. Yeah. If there are nice mountain and water features, you feel good. Yeah. Right? You, you go to a resort, good ones, of course, <laughs> or you go to places where there are good formations, you actually feel good. You feel rejuvenated after a couple of days. Mm. Interesting. So we want that on a consistent basis in our home, in our offices, in our work. Well, thanks, Tato. So we're here in my dream home, the Dawn. And we felt the good energy. I feel the good energy. That's great. And I know that you talked a lot about the environment. And we're going to go and check it out. So stay tuned for the next episode. So there's sentimental water. Sentimental and merciless, merciless. water. Two types of water. There are three types of landforms. Hmm. Okay, this is called flatland dragon. Therefore, access to water is king. Wow, this is like a city within a city. Absolutely. Wow. And this is going to be happening until like I think 10 years. 10 years and you're going to choose a home right here. Oh, that's right. The Dawn right there. Feng Shui's water is supposed to bring wealth, right? Yeah. It, that doesn't mean it. What water brings is...